Hey everyone, welcome to video 3 in the Unity Animators for New FPS Firearms series. In this video, we're going to take a look at adding events to your animation clips, and reacting to those events with scripts. Using events allows us to synchronize our code and our animations, so that things like reloads or shell ejection happens at exactly the right time, instead of just winging it with delays. So, let's jump in. And here I have the shotgun FBX file. So this has all of the meshes, the rig, and the animations for the demo shotgun. And I also have the animator controller for the shotgun open here. Looking at the animation import settings for the FBX, you can see this list here is all of the animation clips that we have. And with the fire clip selected, these are all of the different properties for a clip. And then a bit lower down, we have a drop down section called events. So if I open that up, you can see a single event here. And if I click that, it's called Firearm Eject Shell. And what this means is that the animator for the shotgun is going to be looking for a mono behavior script that implements a method with that specific name. So if we open up the demo facility shotgun, for example, and this object here, Weapon FP Shotgun, this is the FBX with the animator on it. And beneath the animator in the inspector, we have this component. Firearm Anim Events Handler. Let's open the script for that and check it out. So this script has a number of public methods, one of which is Firearm Eject Shell. And all this is doing is it's grabbing the firearm on awake. And here it's saying if the firearm is not null and the firearm has an ejector module, tell the ejector to eject a shell. It's dead simple but it allows the animation itself to control exactly when that happens. So looking back at the fire animation clip, with the events list open and the preview up, if I scroll through the timeline here, you can see the bar moving in the events timeline as well. And then as we hit the point where the event actually fires, you can see that this is the point in the clip where the slide is all the way back. So yeah. Now the other thing to bear in mind is the actual ejector module on here, which is a standard shell eject. This is on the root of the shotgun prefab. And as we go down here, we have this property called delay type. So the options here are none, which means that the instant the gun fires a shot, it will eject a shell. We have elapsed time, which means that as soon as the gun fires a shot, a timer will start and a shell will eject once that timer hits zero. And then we have external trigger. And this means that we need something from outside of this module to tell it when we want to eject the shell. And in this case, that's the firearm anim event handler. So yeah, that's one example. And then this same delay type property is available in a number of other places as well for you to take advantage of. So let's have a look at another example. Again, on the shotgun, we have this incremental reloader module. Now, this can be a bit fiddly to set up because we have all of these different durations. How long does the reload start take? So raising the weapon up to the moment the first shell is entered into the gun. How long does the increment take? So the time between entering shells. And then the end duration. So the time from that last shell entering to being able to shoot again. Instead of puzzling those timings out, we could just switch on this use external triggers property. And now, if I hit play, and I grab a shotgun, you'll see that it completely doesn't work. So, if we hit reload, and there we go, it's just endlessly pumping shells in. The shell count itself isn't actually going up, because nothing is actually telling the shotgun that one has been added. It needs to actually perform the reload. So, if we go back to the script, and you can see that there's a few more methods in here as well. So this component is used by a number of the demo weapons in Neo FPS. And we have in here Firearm Reload Partial and Firearm Reload Complete. So if I just copy that name there and we go into the shotgun, where have you gone? The uh, shotgun settings here. Then we have the reload shell animation clip and the events section of this. And I zoom in, then we can 
that's the wrong one. I want to move this timeline here. So we can see we grab a shell, we slide it in, and then at the point where it seems to be fully in, then we can add a new event here. So clicking this button adds an event at the current point. And we need to name it firearm reload partial after that method. And then we also want to look at the firearm reload stop. And at some point towards the end of this, so probably once the pump is forwards again, so somewhere like that, we want to create another event. And this one we want to rename firearm reload complete. Hit apply. And now we should find that the shotgun suddenly works again. There we go. And we can carry on shooting. So using events like this might involve a few more steps than just manually setting timings in the modules. But there is one other big advantage too. And that's a little feature we mentioned briefly in the basics video. If I hop on over to the shotgun animator controller here and select these different animation states for the reload, start, increment, and stop, then you can see up here the speed setting. And what we can do is we can add a float parameter to control that. Let's call it reload speed and set this to one. And we can actually tick this parameter checkbox here. And it defaulted to it because that's the only float on there, but you would just select it from this list otherwise. And we can add it to each of these for reload speed. Now we hit play. And here we have the standard reload speed. but we could come along here and set this down to something like 0.2, which means that if we were to reload with that setting, then the reload takes much longer. And you can set that speed parameter from your scripts. If you were wanting to add a skill or leveling system to your game, then you could speed up the reloads or the raise and lower for each gun as your player character's skill increases and the firearm system would just adapt to the speed of the animations. Right, so quickly, just to add to what I've been saying, we have here the shotgun with reload animations controlled via events. And I'm just going to quickly show you what happens if you have an animation event with no event handler attached to the weapon. So here I have the shotgun FBX selected, and in animation settings, let's find an animation like fire here. And let's slide a little bit into it. And then let's just add a random event and give it a silly name like uh, Kapla. So if I was to hit play now, I'll grab the shotgun. And if we shoot, boom, we get an error in the console here. So that error says weapon FB shotgun, animation event Kapla on animation fire. Has no receiver. Are you missing a component? So, what this essentially means is that you absolutely need where is the demo facility shotgun? You need, on this object here with the animator, some kind of modern behavior that captures these events that are fired with a public method with that name. Now, a lot of weapon animation kind of assets out there, or FPS assets, that you might want to use with Neo FPS will be making use of animation events to actually trigger different things. So it's quite likely that if you were to use Neo's firearm system, uh, its setup wizard or its quick start or something like that, grab one of their models, set it all up and get it working as you think it should, that as soon as you start using it, you're going to start seeing these errors pop out. So there's no need to hop on the Discord and go, Chris, what's going on? Why is this all broken? Just look up for the key things here. Object X animation event Y on animation Z has no receiver. Everything you need to track down what the problem is, is right there. 
And then there's a couple of ways that you can deal with it. First up, you can just go to your animation event. Here's fire. Expand the events. And there it is, Kapla. And we can just right click and delete the event. The alternative is that you can write a script that catches the event. Just add a public method with that name, and then you can call the relevant NeoFPS API. Or you can just keep the method as a blank stub and do nothing with it. Now that might seem wasteful, but if you're working with an asset that's updated frequently, then it's quite possible that on updating the asset, the event is restored and the error comes back. A stub handler will bypass that. And then you can clean the model up and remove it when you get close to launch instead. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, then feel free to hop on the Discord and say hi. Otherwise, the next video is going to be looking at animation layers. So I'll see you there. Cheers.